seek his will in all you do. And he will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body yeah. and strength for your bones. Yeah. Honor the Lord with your wealth yeah. and with the best part of everything that you produce. Then he will fill your bonds with grain and your vest will overflow with good wine. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Yeah. To God be the glory.
Unified Church. I got a, I got a couple of amen, Pastor Rock. This is a sanctified church. And I tell you what, I've been I was watching some, a bowl game this morning. And even though there wasn't as many people as they wanted to be out there because of COVID and such, I tell you what, when that team did anything, they were hollering like they were. Superintendent Yarbrough and his lovely wife, Lady Yarbrough. These are good friends of ours, I tell you what. And this man is a preacher. I, I, don't, I don't know where you come from, but this, <laughs> this man here is a preacher. Amen. I'm so glad. To, and God does things the way he does things. He does it in him. I tell you what, I, when I heard he was going to be here, I said, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I was just happy down in my soul. Amen. Not that I wasn't happy for anybody else, but this is my friend, and I know who he is. Amen. And so we just thank God for them being here with us, and I thank God for all of you who are in the house tonight. We bless God for all things, for everything that he's done, and he's still doing it right now. Even though you can't see it happening, he's behind the scenes doing what he does, and that is be God. Amen. We just thank God for all of you. And at this time, we're going to uh, bring to you uh, the angel of this house to have words and to go further in the service. Let's say amen for Elder uh, Rogers. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord, oh my son. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. How do you know that the Lord is holy on tonight?
tonight. Amen. And to God be the glory. To God be the glory for what he is allowing us to do on tonight. Amen. Elder Hobson, Pastor Hobson, I just believe that this is the beginning of something even greater. I still say eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered to the hearts of men what God has in store for all of us. Those that love him, those that believe, amen. God is God. Listen, just amen, you are at home. Amen. But if you had new camera, how you would praise God? By the way, amen, if this was a Sunday morning, how you would praise God? Amen. Or wherever you are from tonight, let's let the Lord have his way. Is that all right tonight? Amen. Let's let the Lord know, amen, how much we thank him because he has helped us all the year long. Many didn't make it, but I thank God that I was one of the ones who did on tonight. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Amen. Let's say amen for pastor. Let's say amen for him. Amen. You can do better than that. I know especially those who are listening to us because shout out loud guy. Appreciated him since I've been in the Little Rock, North Little Rock area, how he's opened up this place and said, look, whatever, however the Lord leads you, just do what God says do. I, I, I appreciate that kind of spirit. Amen. Just before we hear our combined choir, I want to just let you know that we're going to have some testimony yes, service. Yes, 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 yes. Now, of course, uh, because of time limitations, we're not going to do testimony service the way we used to. But we got four people who are going to give us special testimonies. Uh, can, can you say special testimony? Amen. We want you to get with them as they're testifying because, look, they're testifying to the glory and honor of God. Something that God has done for them. You ought to get excited when somebody got a testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So first, I, I, right after the choir sings, uh, Mother Ann, Ann Marshall. Mother Ann Marshall, she's going to come. Amen. And then directly following her, uh, Missionary Elaine Stewart from New Calvary, she'll be coming. And then following her, Mother Evelyn Garrett. Amen. And then following her, bringing up the rear there, is inspired missionary Diana Flanders from Calvary. So let's say amen for them. Amen. And let's say amen for this combined choir as they come. I mean, how many know you're gonna make it? You're gonna make it in spite of. You're gonna make it, amen. Say, like, I'll make it.
one until God um, tonight and to my pastor, Ella Rogers, to Ella Hobson, and to our guest speaker on tonight, to Lieutenant Yalbar and his wife, and to our First Lady America, to our First Lady and her Hampson. I thank God for being here. Y'all look at me real good. <laughs>
change of seats. And, and, the, and the tech told me, she said, I'm going to have to put you down on the other end. I don't like to go on that other end because it's so cold in there. You know? I said, I don't like going down there. She said, well, I'm sorry. She said, well, this is how it's going to have to be today. So then I told her, I said, you know what? I said, there's a reason. I said, everything that happened, there's a reason for it. I said, we'll find out what the reason is. And as I was on the machine and they hooked the, the white guy up, and he would just seem like he was fine, like he was stronger than he ever was. But some kind of way, his blood pressure dropped. And they was working on him. And God said, I want to cry and pray for him. And God said, you see. Hi! You need to see. And that's what you went through. You went through the same thing that he's going through. Do you see? Do you see? And I start praying, Lord, give him another chance. Let him come out like you want him. Miss Stewart, 
sure I could just take this off in the office. So we went back for the appointment within two weeks, and he took, he wrestled with that bowl. It was unusual mold to him, uh, and he barely was able to, 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 to uh, uh, cut it off, but he managed. And then he said, Miss Stewart, I'm going to have to sit in this for about six to make sure nothing, no cancerous. And you know how the old enemy gets to talking to you. Oh, it's cancer. Your sister died of cancer. You was right there to see her through. And you're going to go through the same situation that she's going through. I said, Satan, you's a lie. I said, you are a lie.
everything was going wrong in my body. My stomach would hurt really bad. I could barely walk. So I started praying, praying for all my organs on the inside my body. The first week of October, that whole month, I started to get weak. I was working 12 hours a day. And the spirit of death dropped in my spirit. I rebuked the spirit of death. I talked to God. I prayed to God. And I said, God is not my time because I have not deal with you. I say, you put me here for a reason, and I did not did it, and I'm, I'm not ready to go. And I start feeling selfish because I'm like, Lord, uh, forgive me for being selfish because if it's my time, it's my time. But I didn't feel that it was my time. I couldn't sleep at night. I, my arms started getting, started feeling weak. My legs started feeling weak while I was at work. In the, uh, uh, November the 4th was my last night working. And uh, I worked from 11 a.m. to 11 30 p.m. And I, I started feeling bad. And it was time to go home. And the hallway was about from this pool pit to across the street that I had to walk. Well, to the end of the parking lot that I had to walk to. And it seemed like it was getting longer and longer and longer. I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me. Help me get to this parking lot. Help me make it home. I want to make it home. I don't want to be out on this highway because I was taking 70. And 70, Highway 70 is dark, no lights, and nothing around because I was coming from Long Oak. But to go back, um, I was talking to God and telling him, he going to have to live. Help, help me. Thank God. Help me to make it through yeah, this yeah, week. Yeah, Help yeah, me yeah, to make yeah. it through that week. Yeah. And no, November the 5th, I woke up because I could, well, I didn't sleep much. Mm. And my chest was bothering me, so I said I was going to go to the doctor. So I went to my primary care doctor, and I told him that I feel like I have a chest cold. Uh, pneumonia in my chest is what I felt like because I had pneumonia in 2009 and they couldn't, the doctors really couldn't find it. Yes. I kept going to the doctor from November to March and my primary care doctor finally came in and found it. But that's what I thought was going on with me. But he, my primary care doctor told me, he said, well it sounds like you have a blockage. He said, but we're gonna, I'm going to send you over to the heart hospital and let them run some tests. But first, I'm going to run some tests here. He did an EKG, which the lady could not get it right. She ran about three or four of them before she got one right. He did checks as rays. He did two COVID tests. They were negative. The checks as rays didn't show anything. The EKG didn't show anything, but he sent me over to the heart hospital. I got over there. I had to have two more COVID tests. They did x-rays. They did EKG. Nothing. All of it, all of it was clear. Why? Because I was praying and I was asking God to heal me whatever it is. They can't, you know, they're not going to find anything. Amen. So they, 
they admitted me into the hospital. And the heart, heart doctor came in and uh, he told me, he said, well, Miss Garrett, he said, we're going to look. We're going to, we ran some tests, but it's some more tests we have to run. He said, the worst case scenario is we're going to have to crack your chest open and do bypass. Well, at that time, when he was saying that, I was praying, so I really can't remember what he was saying, but I was rejecting that. I reject that.
I give honor to the leaders of this house, to my own pastor, yes. Elder Hobson, Lady Hobson, and the speaker on this evening. And I give honor to all God's people. At the beginning, as I reflect back on 2021, the year started off January. My daughter, Diamond, had a motor vehicle accident. Told about her car. God brought Diamond through. Amen. Here comes the month of May. My son, Daniel, was rear-ended, told about his vehicle. Uh, Daniel is still here. God brought him through. July, someone ran into the back of me. I'm still here. Yeah. 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 Come October, a lady run the stop sign, totaled out my vehicle. I'm still here. So 
when they did, they, they weighed my uterus. And the average size is 50, anywhere from 50 to 60 grams. 1.5 to 2 ounces. Well, what I was carrying around weighed 755 grams. For years, I don't know how long it was growing in me. And, and that average out to be 1.5 pounds. Now, we done went from 1.5 to 2 ounces to 1.5 pounds. Who would serve a God? Who would serve a God? I will bless him.
pumping folks and crying and all that kind of, but I can't help it. I just got to do my part when I'm up, you see. When I'm up, I, I get a chance to go ahead and tell what God has done. Because I don't care what you say, God is still good. Yes, he is. Well, why don't you put those hands together? And give God some praise. And they belong to God. All the glory. All the honor. All the praises. And they belong to God. So I'm going to give you another opportunity to just stand on your feet. And, and we do it when they say when the president come in, when officials come in. And all that kind of stuff, we ask you to stand. Well, I want you to stand because the greatest person in this building and that we all to acknowledge is Jesus Christ. God Almighty. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. And so long as we just give him a praise and show him how much he was going. because I'm keeping my, my comments short because I think it's time for the word. Yeah. It's time for the word. I know many of you heard about Betty White. 99 and she almost made it. But she didn't make it. But you hear. You were here. And you don't know, you may be. You're here now, but before you get home, you may be gone. And I want you to reflect on what, I don't know what Betty White was doing. But what do you want to be remembered doing if this was your last time? appreciate my friend and my brother. It's good when you're in this line of business that you can have somebody that you can call and they won't look at you crazy and look at you funny and all that kind of stuff. They right there with you. Brother, I can relate to you. I know what you're talking about. And so I thank God for Pastor Waters and our brothership and our friendship and I just thank him and I appreciate him. We give honor the house has already been addressed. Amen. Yeah. But we have a man of God and we appreciate him. Like I heard somebody say, God never make a mistake and he just knows we might look at one way, God may have another way of doing things. And I picked up the phone and I was the pastor and I got the news that the other speaker we had and I said, who can we get? And I, the Lord, I was just right there where he says, Pastor, Superintendent, y'all are I said, okay, okay, Lord, let me just call him. And I call him, and he hears, I said, oh, Lord. I said, I said now, what you doing this, this New Year weekend? What you got planned? <laughs> well, I was looking at going out of town, but what you got, brother? What you got? What you got? And I told him, he said, well, let me give the head of the house. <laughs> See what we can work out. Call me right back and he said, Brother, I'll be able to. Yeah. And I know without a doubt that you will not be disappointed. He has a word and he's anointed. I've known him throughout his I'm not, I'm not gonna say, but I, I am there. I guess I have been around a little while. <laughs> Praise God. 
But I've known him and he and I've watched him out and he's he's a dynamic speaker. And we're gonna want you to pray for him as he come to us and give to us what God has given him. And that's none other than pastor, superintendent, evangelist, doctor, whatever you titles you want to give them. James Yarbrough. Choir. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brothers, I'm, I'm, I'm calling on the brothers down. Uh, thank you for the sisters holding us up. Brothers, brothers, brothers. Call from, from, the, from the selection from the choir. We'll be under the voice of Superintendent James Yarbrough. You know, you've seen it.
lift our hands to the Lord. As you were coming down the aisle, the Lord started talking to me concerning you. There's a great anointing that rests upon your life. And God said tonight that it's no accident that you're here. God said tonight something is getting ready to be loose and unlocked over your life. Though the past two years the enemy has come against you and he has tried his best to stop the purpose and the plan of God. God said that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Because it's not just about you, woman of God, but it's about your children. Because there's a great call and great ministry upon them, their lives as well. And God said, think it not strange, because I have called thee, saith the Lord. For there are books in thee, saith God. Your hands have been anointed for healing and deliverance. And God said the same attacks that have come up. There's some parts of your story that you can't tell everybody. There's some stuff that you can't through, woman of God, that you can't tell. But God said because you have come through and because I have kept you, I have anointed you with a special grace and a special call. And God said this is your coming out party. 2022 is going to be the year that God brings you and pulls you out.
شد تیاره رو باسی نمه شکر ریست من هنه وصیت ای من ریست می فاده ای فکی فای یا پریزنس ای فکی شکر رو نباسیت ای لار جیزس I thank you for your glory that you've placed in this house tonight. Father, don't let me go any further than you and I. Speak to us, Lord. Our purpose is hanging in the balance. Our destiny is hanging in the balance. Our blessing is hanging in the balance. God, we didn't come to play church tonight. Your people need a touch. And Father, I ask right now, that you will bless each and every person under the sound of my voice. And we won't wait until the battle is over, but we'll shout right now. Because the victory is already won. Come on and give God praise and glory if you believe it. In Jesus' name. I greet you. I greet you. I greet you in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God, son and Abba. I thank God for being here. And I thank God for his presence and his power that is in the house. And I want somebody, I know, I'm going to get ready to preach. I know you're waiting on preaching. I'm going to give you some preaching in a minute. But God is talking right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I dare somebody that needs a blessing and needs a miracle to do like that mama, mama in the grave back there and just reach your hands up toward heaven, open up your mouth and give God the best praise you got. Come on, come on, give God the best praise you got. Come on, do it for real tonight. God said, if you praise for our Snippy, if you praise for our turn around, if you praise for our heal your body. Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Before you take your seat, I want you to clap your hands for these two great leaders. Come on, come on. Pastor Rogers, Pastor Hobson. Come on, give it up, give it up for two great pastors. Hey, lovely wives. Come on, give it up for them. Hallelujah. Why don't you to do something for me? Amen, because I owe her big time. Praise the Lord. I was supposed to be taking her on a little getaway. Sister Hobson, I made up for it. I took a shopping right before we came. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Happy wife, happy night. Amen. 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 Come on, give it up for my sweetheart, my darling wife. Lady Latoya, y'all girl, come on, give it up for her. She is my partner in ministry. I cannot do what I do without her. Amen. And I'm so appreciative that she understands the call of God on my life. Because she's called to. Amen. And so we are in this together. Amen. And, amen. And, um, and she is, has been, she has been with me now going on 24 years. And I just love her. I love her tonight. Amen. The word of the Lord, I, I don't want to be long, I do want to be strong, amen, and um, there is a word from the Lord, woman of God, God is going to do something specifically for you, and I know we're in the season of COVID, um, but before this service is over, amen, um, Lady Yarbrough and I want to lay hands on you, praise the Lord, we're going to be safe, we're going to do it the right way, amen. But, um, but the Lord told me specifically there's some things that God is getting ready to do for you going into 2022. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Your name is about to come up in some places. Hallelujah. God is about to smile on you. And he's going to begin, he's going to begin with healing the wounds of yesterday. God said, because people don't know sometimes how much, how much it hurts you and how much you have to push at times to even praise and worship 
But God says your anointing comes because of your personal relationship with me. God said they didn't see you when you were crying in the night season. But God said I heard your prayer and I heard your secret frustration. And God said because that's where the oil comes from. And God said that's the oil that I'm getting ready to release to the kingdom of God. For you are called for such a time as this. Get ready. Because this is your season, woman of God. Come on, give God. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I just, I talk when God says talk. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Two verses. Verses 30 and 31. I hope you brought your Bible, your iPad, your iPhone. Something you can grab the word with. This is a familiar passage of scripture, but I want us to look at it with prophetic eyes. As God releases a key um, for the next season of your life. Luke chapter 19. When you have the word of the Lord, say, I have his word. It says, go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a coat tied, whereon yet never a man sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man asks you, why do ye loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. Uh, from this uh, familiar text, the Lord would speak prophetically. I want you to find somebody, amen, keep your mask on and keep your social distance. But I want you to look at somebody, amen, and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. My, prayer my prayer for 2022 is, Lord, loose me. For my new season. I want to talk about. Lord, loose me for my new season. If we can tell the truth tonight, for some of you, this year has been a struggle. You've had battles, you have had, and I love the testimonies, amen, the testimonial service. Praise the Lord and those testimonies of victory. Um, encouraging the saints of God. Amen. But even in the midst of your struggle, amen, you have the testimony that God kept you. When others said that you wouldn't make it and you, you, you kept pressing on. When others walked away, you stood strong and and so not only should you praise God tonight for what God has done, but we are celebrating what God is going to do in the next season of our life because you survived for a purpose. I want you to encourage your neighbor and say, neighbor, you survived for a purpose. Yeah, yeah because there's a prophecy and a promise hanging over your life. What you got to understand is you're not going to expire, amen, until you have gotten everything that God has promised you. Who am I preaching to in here that's got enough faith, amen, to believe that God, amen, is not going to allow me to leave this earth until I receive every promise and every prophecy that he has spoken over my life. That's why cancer couldn't kill you. That's why the liar, amen, couldn't stop you. That's why the ditch, amen, the ditches that they dug for you didn't work. Why? Because there's a prophecy, amen, and a promise hanging over my life. I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. Amen. Elder Rogers, I'm excited about your future. I'm excited about your future because God is getting ready to bring you into a new, somebody shout, new season. Yeah. Yeah, and I know, I know that we always say this, and it has almost become cliche, amen, around this time of year, but I must tell somebody that your new season has nothing to do with the calendar date. Your, 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 your new season has nothing to do, amen, with 1201, 
a man on the clock. Yeah. Amen. Uh, can I tell you that your new season has to do with the decision that you make to walk into the new thing that God has for you. When you make the decision that I'm going to walk in this new season that God has for me and I'm going to receive everything that God has promised me, that's when your new season begins. So you can be in the middle of July. That's your January 1. You can be, oh my God, somebody missed it. Amen. You can be in the middle of September. Amen. That's your January 1. When you make a decision, tell your neighbors and neighbors, it's time for you to decide. It's time. I don't know about you, I don't know about you, but I'm not waiting on, on January 1, 2022 to declare a new season over my life. I've been declaring my new season the moment I received the word of the Lord. What we must understand, Pastor Rod, is that many people will walk into the new year, but they will never experience a new season because they will not release the old. Because some of us are like the children of Israel, amen, and we're walking around in the wilderness when God, amen, has promised us a land flowing with milk and honey. But we can't get out of our own way, amen, because mentally we're still holding on to folk that God said, let them go. I want to bring you a new boo, amen, but you're still crying over the one that left you. I'm coming to get you in the I'm coming. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, stop crying over spilled milk. Stop crying. Man, there, there comes a time when I have to move on in my life. So, so if you don't, if you don't want to hang with me, amen, that's, that's your problem. That's not mine. And if you don't understand the gift that I am and could be to you, that's your problem. Amen. You ought to thank God for some closed doors. Have you ever, have you ever, amen, uh, uh, saw, amen, the person that you thought was the one and you saw them a few years later, amen, and then when you met them, you smiled, but then you got down the road of peace and started shouting and dancing and thanking God, amen, because, praise the Lord, of what God kept you from. Y'all, 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 God said, I got something better, but you gotta learn how to lose some stuff. I got better, I got better, I got better, I got better. So, so sit down, we talking, we talking, we talking, we talking. I'm making a little nervous over here. We, we talking, we just, we just talking. We just talking. See, uh, uh, we got to understand that, amen, child of God, in order to get to the new season, will mean having to let go of the old one. Uh, see, Paul said it best when he said, this one thing I do. He said, amen, I am forgetting those things which are behind me, and I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. In other words, Paul's future was too important, amen, to allow the past to hold him back. He had made up his mind that if he was going to go forward toward his future, he would need to press onward. And that's why I want to encourage somebody tonight to let you know, amen, that your future is calling you. My God, that's good preaching to me. Amen. Tell your neighbor and encourage them tonight. Amen. If you don't want to talk, praise the Lord, you need to change your seat. But we're going to talk tonight. Amen. Keep your mask up and talk to your neighbor. He said, neighbor, your future is calling you. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's calling you, it's calling you. Amen, amen, 2022 is calling you. Amen, opportunity is knocking at your door. And it is up to you if you're going to make a decision, amen, to open the door to the newness of God. Man, what God has next is too important to allow your past to hold you up. Amen, it's for you, praise the Lord, you've got to press toward the future. Amen. We've got to press toward the future. So tonight as we move in our text, there are some powerful truths that I believe will help us to walk into that new arena. What I believe the Spirit is telling us is that you and I have been loosed to walk into our new place. Now in the text, Jesus is about to be crucified and he does something strange. 
change. The text tells us that Jesus instructs his disciples to go into a city. And when they enter the city, they will find a coat tied. That never a man sat upon. And he tells them to loose it and bring it to him. Now, now the question I ask myself is why did Jesus ask them to go get the coat? The reason was because there was a prophecy spoken hundreds of years before. In Zechariah 9 and verse 9 it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon a donkey and upon a colt. Amen. Jesus asked for the colt because God God had spoken a word hundreds of years before. Can I prophesy to you tonight? Amen. Some of you are getting ready to walk into your greatest season because God spoke a word in 2005. God spoke a word in 2012. God spoke a word in 2018. And God said, I was setting some things up. I was getting your attitude together because if I had given it to you too soon, Soon, you would have torn it up. But now you're in the place where you can handle the blessing that I'm getting ready to bring your way. God said, get ready because I'm setting you up for the best season of your life. Is there anybody that can give God praise in advance because of the prophecy that God is about to bring forth? But we got to understand this is the season that God is getting ready to manifest what he prophesied. Can I tell you, child of God, that 2022 is going to be the year that you see what he said. Oh, Jesus. I know this ain't for everybody. Amen. But I think I got about 25 of you here that I'm preaching to. Amen. And don't mind declaring by faith that 2022 is my year to see what he said. That manifestation is about to take place in my life. I know you received some prophecies that have not come to pass yet. But it was because God, amen, was moving and doing some things behind the curtain. And you are getting ready to find your coat tie. In other words, the coat is symbolic of the thing that God has promised you. Just like the disciples walked into the city and found the coat. This is your season to walk in and get what God promised you. The, the coat was there all along, but the disciples had to go in and get it. In this season, there are amen, some things that you will have to go in and get yourself. I know you're praising God. I know you've high-fived your neighbor. I know you turned around three times. I know you prophesied prophesied and decreed and declared it. But God said, now I need you, amen, to put some action to your faith. So if you believe in God for the new house, start packing boxes. If you believe in God for the new car, go buy you some new mats, amen, for the floorboard and a new keychain. Y'all ain't y'all. You playing with me tonight. God said, put some feet to your faith. Say your neighbor, say neighbor, if you're going to get what God has for you, you got to put some feet to your faith. This is, this is your season to go in and get it. See, see, what we must understand, you're getting ready to walk into the greatest season of your life. But in this season, you cannot be afraid to step out in faith and believe God for what you don't see right now. All the disciples had to go on, all the disciples had to go on was a word from the Lord. But can I tell you, child of God, is that that was all that they needed. And I'm preaching to some folk in here today, amen, that people think you crazy. That, amen, people think you have lost your mind because you got a word from the Lord. But can I tell you, child of God, the one word from God is what will make the difference in your life. One word can change change your destiny. One word will heal your body. One word will save your family. One word will change your situation. Is there anybody in here? 
Y'all got to miss it. Yeah. Amen. In other words, you got to be careful in this season of who you hook up with. Don't be surprised of who drops off. Amen. After 1201, amen, January 1, 2022. But don't worry about those, amen, who don't go with you into your new season because God says, I'm bringing some folk just like the disciples who understand that there is purpose on your life and they're getting ready to fund, amen, and help you do what I called you to do. So you're worried about the bills, you're worried about the vision, you're worried about how, amen, am I going to make this happen? But God says, I've called some folk already, amen, that have the ability to loose you for the next place that I've called you to. God says that this is the season I'm putting the right people in the right place at the right time just for you. Will somebody else, amen, who ain't scared and who ain't jealous, will lift your hands toward heaven and say, Lord, I thank you that you're releasing the right people in this season for my life. Now come on and give God praise for it. God said, I'm releasing the, the right people. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you're crying about the ones that left you. You're crying. You're crying about, amen, the ones that uh, walked away from you. You're crying about the ones that, uh, amen, scandalized your name. But, uh, but God said, I've got some folk coming. Yeah. God said, I've got some disciples coming. Yeah. God said, I've got some folk with power and anointing yeah, that understand that God is calling you. Yeah. Can I tell you, child of God, yeah, that this calling is not just for the choir. Yeah. This calling is not just for the pulpit. Yeah. But this calling is for the pew. Yeah. And God told me to tell you tonight yeah, that if you will say yes to God, yeah, God said, I'm going to anoint you for the next season. Yeah. And I'm getting ready to lead you. Yeah. But if you're going to step into this new thing, yeah, you got to learn how to be led. Yeah. So the coat didn't kick. Amen. It was a new coat. And not a man has sat on it before. So I'm scratching my head. Amen. And understand, trying to understand this. Because we know that most animals, most of them, will not be privy to being led. But I believe that this was a God thing. That God was showing them that if you allow me to lead your life, I will lead you into your purpose and to your destiny. The cult didn't know that he needed to carry Jesus. I stopped by to let somebody know, child of God, that the reason you didn't quit, the reason you didn't die, the reason you didn't give up, the reason you didn't stop is because God was calling you. Is there anybody in here that said, Lord, I'm going to allow you to lead me. Lord, if you lead me, I know I'll be better. Lord, if you lead me, I know I'll have peace. Lord, if you lead me, I know I'll receive power. Lord, if you lead me, I know I'll receive my blessing. Is there anybody in here that's willing to lift your hands and open up your mind and say, Lord, what do you need? I will follow. Love flows because God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Word Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our church.